Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday, December 14th in the Locker Room. I'm Alan Locker. Real-life husbands, actors, and entrepreneurs Taylor Fry and Kyle Dean Massey, along with writer, director, and producer Jake Helgren, are here today to tell us about their new film, A Christmas to Treasure, airing on Lifetime Television, this Friday evening, December 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Taylor and Kyle will update us on their careers, their premier surrogacy company, Elevate, and what fatherhood is like to their beautiful one-year-old daughter, Rafa. Jake has produced four original features premiering this year on It's a Wonderful Lifetime's lineup for Lifetime TV with his Ninth House Films production company. He will also tell us what it was like directing his two good friends in this LGBTQ plus led romantic holiday film, which he also wrote, and why representation matters in today's world. Please welcome to the locker room, Taylor Fry, Kyle Dean Massey, and Jake Helgren. Gentlemen. Hello. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Happy Hello. holidays. We have a lot to celebrate. Yesterday, the Respect for Marriage Act. Yes. yes. Yeah. Isn't that great? What did, so excited. What did you all think? Um, I thought the White House was lit up beautifully. Um, I watched, I actually had friends there that were like on, on property. It was really cool to see that. I was like, how do you get that invite? Could people just show <laughs> That's up? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually point. found out on your story, Taylor, I was looking, I was looking through, I'm, I'm actually on a writing deadline right now. So like I wasn't finishing <laughs> my, my work until like 11 p.m. And I'm like scrolling through the stories. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> great news. <laughs> it's uh, a win. It's a scary yeah. time. And this is such a win. It feels, you know, we can kind of take a, a little br a breath. It, it, yeah. it is. It's yeah. interesting. Today's my mom's birthday. She's no longer alive. And I was just thinking like, if she, you know, if she had seen that, it would have really, you know, <laughs> she, she did support me, which is very lucky. You know, not everybody has a mom who does that. But yeah, it's a, you know, it was really nice to see that yesterday. I would love to go to the White House someday and see pride colors beaming from, you know, the premier, you know, house in our country. Amy yeah. Coney Barrett is not going to be the end of the gay community. I'm really <laughs> No, she is not. No, she's not. Well, <laughs> tell me about the premiere last Tuesday night for A Christmas to Treasure. What was it like? seeing yourselves on the big screen. Oh, it was super fun. We had, we had <laughs> fun and this was, this was the, the screening. Cause you know, our official premiere is, is this it's Friday. Friday. We're this right, right. Yes. This was so this VIP was just like a screening. private screening just for yeah. um, some <clears throat> very close friends and, and the cast. Um, first of all, I mean, it was just really great to see everybody and be together, but it was really, really fun to see the Christmas movie like during the Christmas holiday. Cause as you know, we shoot these things in the middle of the year. <laughs> and so, um, so it was really lovely to see it during the holiday season. It, it might have been 90 degrees while you were shooting, you know, 10 degrees. Uh, on no, camera. we were big there. It was Christmassy. We were, there, was, there was still snow. We were like staying yeah, in lodges. Yeah. It, it felt super. It was easy to get into the, the spirit. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Well, was. Taylor, I heard you made a little speech before the screening started. Yeah, yeah. We Jake and Can I got up there and kind of introduced the the movie and why we felt it was important. You know, this is just one of 26 films being presented by Lifetime um, and the own, um, that, that is gay led. So I think that it, it, I know it's cozy, it's beautiful. Ninth House and Jake, they do incredible work with these films. I mean, they're, they're better than a lot of the holiday films we see. Um, and though the story is sweet and whimsical, it, you know, what I kind of said to the audience there with Jake um, was that this means a lot. Um, the ratings mean a lot. We want more of these films to, to be made in a space where it seems to have been reserved for heterosexual couples and visibility. So, you know, for me, being able to even be in this film with my husband, with a gay director, like, this is what makes me tick. This is what makes me want to keep going. Um, I told my agents, I think a couple of years ago, I said, I, I don't even, I think it's great straight actors, gay actors, switching it up, whatever. I wish it was more equal. That's not the case. Um, but I don't want to audition for, for straight roles right now. So. Um, the little boy in me is very happy. So, yeah. I love that you've um, taken a stand like that. That's pretty great yeah. to, to, to know that it's important for you to do that. It's and, and, 
Yeah, I mean, it, and, yeah, I and, and that you can do that. You can actually choose that. Not everybody is willing to to do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I do feel lucky to be in a position where I'm like, this is kind of want to work I do, but I like being on set and playing opposite gay men and being directed. But you know, it's it's fun when you're creating a gay film, authentic. Well, you know, when other networks that we won't name are trying to cut us out, this is an amazing film. Yeah, so why? we're really we're really grateful that you know Lifetime. Um, you know, is doing a film, you know, we're, we're grateful that, and, they, and they've consistently done one since 2020, um, a gay led film. And I think they're the only network that actually has done um, uh, consistently in 20, 2020, 2021 and 2022, um, a gay led film, which is, which is fantastic. You know, Hallmark has had supporting, you know, as you know, Jonathan Bennett was like a, uh, it was a big role. So it was a big deal for Hallmark to be doing that. Um, as, as Lifetime has had, um, even in 2019, uh, a gay kiss, which, you know, made a lot of headlines, but it was a, from a supporting couple in the wow. film. So I, I do feel like, you know, Lifetime has been, you know, making a lot of headway there. And, and it is, and it will grow, you know? And I think that's, you know, it is, I, I will concur what Taylor said as far as um, the representation goes and like there being more roles um, and more jobs for, for me as a writer director as well for, for, for queer storytellers um i i i would love to be just doing gay stuff all the time right now as well you know <laughs> there's something there's something um exciting about especially you know taylor and and kyle dean and myself have been, all been in the business for a very long time so to just now be in a place where we're getting to do this stuff consistently i mean i think we've all done a little bit of you know, queer here and there. I mean, you know, Nashville and yeah. GBF. And I, my first movie was a very, very no budget queer film. But, um, you know, I, I think to be able, but we were like those, you know, were those one offs <laughs> yeah. and to be able to come back and it's actually now kind of becoming a more normal part of um, our, our storytelling. It's, it's very exciting for sure. Well, I, I think back, I mean, I'm older than the three of you and, you know, I couldn't imagine you know, sitting home on a Friday night and having the opportunity to, you know, watch gay, you know, gay men like myself up on screen in a holiday movie. I mean, that's, you know, I, I think people are going to, you know, someday you're going to get letters that are just going to be like, I came out because Taylor and Kyle, you know, knowing your also real life husbands, there you are up on screen. And the representation really does matter at a time where so many you know, um, I was going to use the word, but it is true. Idiots are trying to cut us out of things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's um, already, it's already happened. Like when we did the two years ago, when I did dashing in December, the night of the premiere, I can't even tell you my, my DMS were just flooded with people. I did not know men from all over the country who had like watched that movie and like, you know, we're just, I, I'll get emotional talking about it because it's just like, it was, I had no idea, you know, just the, the number of strangers who were like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like it, it's, it's really, really something, it's something special to, to see that happening. So I love that you, you, you three should be proud. Did, um, did you go to Lifetime with this? Was this something you went to them with, with you know, writing this ahead of time for them? Yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't like an official, it wasn't an official deal um, necessarily. Like, you know, we we were, we have a great relationship with them. We've sold a lot of films to them. We had made mention of, you know, we make mention of projects that we're, we're looking to do with our, with our distributor, uh, primarily, um, you know, who does the foreign uh, sales, Nicely Entertainment, a really great partner of ours who was, you know, very in support of doing this movie. Um, and, uh, you know, we can get like some feedback from them saying this is the kind of movie that we would be interested to 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 do. Um, you know, so so and I knew they were looking for a queer film for for this year. So uh, that's kind of how it came to fruition. But we were kind of hell bent on making the movie no matter what the circumstances were. Um, and it was really exciting because, you know, I, I knew from the get that like I wanted to to do a movie with I had worked with both Taylor and Kyle Dean on other Christmas movies um, where they both played heterosexual men. Uh, so I was like, I just want to do a movie where they're playing a couple. And I mean, the first thing that Taylor responds was, 
uh, yeah. Like I didn't have a script. They're like, yeah, we're in. And then Taylor was like, uh, I get to fight with Kyle Dean on camera. Like this is the best thing ever. <laughs> so. I, I love that. Well, Jake, tell us um, where the idea for the film came from and what it's about. I actually originally, when I first came up with the pitch, um, it was a, um, you know, heterosexual pitch that I was writing. I, I came up with a pitch like a couple of years ago. And then at some point, I just remember thinking like, would this work as a gay story? I really like this. Like, because because it's almost like the gay, the, the, the queer element of it um, is is not a thing in the movie, you know? So, and that is what kind of is exciting about, one of the really exciting things about the movie is it's not a big, sh there's not a lot of showmanship in the in the uh, the queer part of it. It is kind of normal people living normal everyday lives and the two leads just happen to be gay. And no one ever really makes mention, I mean, they, they do talk about, you know, the clip that's been shared um, on mm -hmm. a few different um, news networks is, is you know Miss Marley, the, who is the woman who passed, who they're doing the who who hosted the hunt before. Um, she you know knew that they were gay, and I think that's as much as we ever kind of get into it, you know. And it is it's because there are older generations who have been very accepting, and you know those people have like you know were oftentimes quiet or forced to be quiet, you know, because they were afraid of their own judgment from people. So. Yeah, that's that's what when I decided to make it gay, uh, I was like, makes sense as a gay led love story, and and that's kind of how it just transpired. So, well, it so, might be shocking to some people, but we do le lead ordinary lives, and it, it's not everything is gay about us. Trauma, <laughs> every not everything is like like tra gay trauma, <laughs> De definitely, definitely not. Kyle, were you um, as excited as your husband was at the prospect? <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. You know, um, well, first of all, like, you, if, I don't know if you can tell, but we're obsessed with Jake. We, Taylor and I have done, how many movies have we done together? I mean, maybe not at the same time. But three, three total. Four. Four. Yeah, three. three. Four, 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 four. Is it three or four? Okay. okay. I found no, this for hey, 33 total. No, four. Yeah, it's four. This win is our fourth because it's Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas and I'm in the Woods. Um, uh, Day by Christmas Eve in this one. Yes. So four. Yeah. So, I mean, just just the idea of, of getting to work with Jake in Ninth House is, is something that like, we would always jump at just because we have the best time. Like, we, we truly have the best time um, just being on set and getting to work with them. So fun. And then throwing Taylor into the mix. And what was great was that <laughs> You know, normally when you do anything, you know, like it, go do a Broadway show or go do a movie or a TV show, like you just kind of go by yourself. And sometimes mm. you'll just kind of get stuck in cast housing and you're kind of in this bubble working on that project. And this was really cool because we got to go together. We took our daughter. We took our Manny. And like we just holed up in Big Bear like as a family and made this movie. Um, and so that was totally different than any other experience I've ever had. And that was really fun. It, it really was like a family affair for us. So you just cool. made my day. You, ha you have a Manny? Well, we used to. We did. Yeah, we did. We're terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. Uh-oh. Are you too, too, too tough? <laughs> apparently. Apparently. <laughs> um, how did you three meet? Was it on a project or did you know each other before the first film you did? Actually, the first the first time we auditioned for a Ninth House film, Kyle and I both read for a role that Kyle would end up getting. <laughs> um, and then Jake remembered just, me and had liked some of my old work, and he he offered me a role in in the next movie. I was um, like, "Damn it, Alan, you're gonna you just you just oh, yeah, you, you knew what I'm sorry, I didn't know. Gosh, I had a nickel for both of us." <laughs> Listen, the truth is, if you want Kyle, you don't want me in the role. If you want me, you don't want Kyle. True. We could not be it's more It's true. Different. Yeah, um, it is true. Yeah, And he was so great. And that movie was was so beautifully done. It was perfect. That, that was, was a great movie. It was really uh, funny because I definitely, I, I mean, I had seen, I had seen, um, I mean, GBF, I, I, I'm, you know, Darren Stein is a buddy of mine. And I love that film. I read that script before it became a film when it was an out, Outfest screenwriting lab, um, you know, contender. And I just thought it was one of the a great script. And it's a fantastic film that if you if people have, if you guys have not seen GBF, go watch that movie. 
Uh, I saw Taylor in that and he's just hilarious. And I, I, I loved him. I've worked with Andrea Bowen, who's, who's also in the film and plays his girlfriend. She's fantastic. Um, but, uh, but my producing partner is a big fan of Nashville. So she knew Kyle Dean. And when we saw both of their names pop up on breakdowns, it was actually really funny because um, we were like thinking about, I don't know, other actors. Cause I thought they were in New York. I was like, these guys don't, they're not even here. They like, and it turns out they had just recently moved to LA and I was mm -hmm. like, I'd really love to, to see them. But yes, Ka Taylor's right. It was very much a Kyle Dean role. But when Taylor came to visit set, I was just like, Hey, look, <laughs> We're doing a movie next, literally it was the next month. I was like, we're doing a movie next month and I have a role for you that's perfect. So I'd love for you to come play. He's like, okay. <laughs> and I loved that role. That role was yeah. so fun. Maybe I shouldn't just play my gay characters because he, <laughs> <laughs> he was fun. Did anything Taylor and Kyle surprise you? Cause you've never worked together ever, right? Yeah, no. Anything surprise you of each other's process? on this project? Process? I feel like I've been pretty tuned into Taylor's process because we've been together for so long. But um... I would say the difference was like, Kyle is buttoned up on set. Like you, he says the line is perfectly written, which is great and you should do that. As opposed to real life though, Taylor? I mean, that's kind of how I am in real life though. No, well, that's what I mean. Like I... <laughs> I was kind of like, I didn't want to interrupt his whatever it was, but like, I, I do like to have fun on set. I think a lot of people would, would I don't know, I like to bring energy and like keep it a little looser and collaborate. And Kyle, like, definitely let me do my thing. And I watched him do his thing. And I think that's kind of what made the dynamic what it is in the movie, which is, is pretty good. So, um, yeah, no, I expected a Kyle to be how he was on set pretty much. <laughs> And, and Jake, for you directing them together? You know, I mean, I knew it was going to be fun. I knew it was going to be an adventure in and of itself. Um, and I, and we were, it's actually funny that you asked the question because we were at, we all went out after the VIP screening uh, last week and we were, you know, drinking and I was actually telling them, I was like, it's just, they couldn't be more different um, as far as like just their acting styles go, um, how they approach, you know, the scene work and, and, dialogue and and just their characters in general so i you know there but they were I, I was expecting more uh teasing more banter like from them off like camera but they were both really like like cool with each other and like i was like well this ain't like when we're out hanging out after set drinking <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, no, it was it was it was it was fun to watch them work. I mean, and obviously they're you know the chemistry is just like built in, so it's yeah. you know it's, it's sure lucky. sure lucky. hope so. <laughs> um, when you say you say that they they are different or that you guys do have a different process, is that just from training? You think or where do you think that just or just who you are as individuals? I don't know. Probably I would say the latter. Yeah. yeah. As, as they are as individuals. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because yeah, all, I mean, it's, it's really funny. It's actually interesting because crew crew members tend to always think actors are all the same. They're like, oh, actors are all, like all, you know. And I, I don't know if actors maybe think that same about crew, but like actors are all so different. Yeah. Like, the, like, it's like I, I've seen at this point, you know, every shape, form, fashion, and it's, it's, they all approach it very differently. So, yeah. I think I think sometimes Kyle, he likes, I'm not going to speak for you, sweetie. but it I, seems, I know what you're going to say, though. Well, you like a road oh, map. This is where we're going to end up. Um, and I, to feel secure, I need to know kind of the steps on how we're going to get there. And I think that's a beautiful way to approach things and definitely how he approaches life. Um, I, would, I love to be surprised mm -hmm. and like someone mess with me in some way that brings something out that maybe wouldn't be expected in the scene or we find ourselves surprised and that's a golden moment or I don't know. So I think I, that's I have a better way to say this, Taylor. I feel like right. of course you do. I <laughs> I I come alive best when I'm really well rehearsed because it's only once I'm really well rehearsed that I can really be free. And Taylor is the complete opposite. Yeah. He rehearsing will absolutely put a nail in it for him. Mm -hmm. Um he he enjoys the spontaneity and he become, is the most free when he feels like it's um, 
spontaneous and new, and I'm just the complete opposite. So like when it comes to like a lot of times you'll find an actor on set, if you have a scene, you're like, oh, you want to run that scene again while you're in your chairs or at Crafty or something. Taylor's not the person to do that with. Since, like he's he does not want to run the scene with you, run your lines. He's just kind of like, yeah, okay, I'll definitely run lines. Of course, I'll run lines. <laughs> lines but yeah i don't i'm not here to like plan out what's gonna happen once he says action like yeah i don't know that's not me yeah no, no that, i think it's a great way to describe it and, and what was it like bringing rafa to set it's so fun it was adorable it's so cute yeah. it's just fun to show her like ultimately i want my daughter to be proud of me um throughout her life i want to make her like that's my dad and i'm proud of him and you know, there's something cool about filmmaking that it does usually kind of stick around forever. Sometimes you'll have to find it and unbury it to watch it again. Sure. But, you know, it was fun to introduce her to this world that I just think is so magical, which is cinema and film. And it is my favorite medium to do art in and to get her in a chair. I'm not going to be staged at or push her into anything, but like she's also really cute and she'd probably be a great actress. So we'll see. Well, I'm sure she's finding it quite magical now if there's things you're putting on the television and she will continue as this young age progresses. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is there is there a favorite holiday movie you both are looking forward to introducing her to? Besides all the good ones. Taylor, that's what we do. I mean, like starting when did we even watch our first one, Taylor? Like maybe Too Halloween. Much. Yeah. Right after <laughs> Halloween. We like every every year we kind of like go through the canon. Um, <laughs> oh, that's great. We watch I, I, I'm gonna introduce her to the family stone. It's probably my number one. A close second is the holiday when she's old enough. Um, but you know what's really cute for kids is Klaus on Netflix. That movie like moves me to tears. I think it is absolutely genius. Is that a Netflix yeah. movie? Like it's a Netflix animated feature and it's just so funny it's so well written it is one of the best animated christmas movies i have ever oh seen. maybe ray and i'll do that on christmas day we want to do a movie day oh that you have so to good. it's so good i cry oh, every time i watch it yeah well really jake good. you know writing holiday movies you know do you have a favorite of yours um, no, i don't mean of yours sorry a, a favorite holiday movie that has inspired you to write these so many yeah i mean i i mean home alone is probably home alone and hocus pocus are probably my two favorite movies of all time so i you know definitely growing up in my household small town texas like watching movies was something we lived out in the middle of the country me and my sisters used to just watch movies um and uh i grew up on on these these movies and so yeah home alone um definitely love actually i mean i literally have love actually tattoo on my arm um i do love so that. i love yeah, that, actually all that around. To you. my, my husband me. has never seen that that's one we're definitely watching what? i know i know i shock wow. shock 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 and jake i worked on hocus pocus oh you did oh yeah i, I well, used to do movie pr early okay. in my career very cool well it's a, it's a classic it's, it's a, a great classic thing. yeah it's just like i saw it like in an outdoor rooftop in October um, downtown and it just like, it holds up. Like, I mean, yeah. there, there's little set pieces that are kind of, you know, age looking. And I, I actually watched it right after I watched the new one. So I'm like, well, it feels like there's things that like, but like it holds up, like it's still really like, and I, you know, watch it every year, but this was, I was actually sitting down watching it on a big screen. So it was, yeah, it was, it was fun. You know what though? It's kind of like me and Dolly Parton. It was like, we loved drag queens before we really knew what the, that was. <laughs> you know wait yeah. alan are you jewish i am yeah so what is like do you have what do, yeah what do you do, do what do you watch about? yeah uh, I've, really I've always watched you know christmas movies you know love you know i'm love obsessed action. with menorahs obsessed i don't know why but i'm so into menorahs i need i need a bunch of oh, there is oh yeah, really amazing. yeah like yeah, there are some there are some gorgeous they're amazing menorahs. yeah mm -hmm. they're amazing yeah. Another fantastic Christmas movie, Black Christmas, 1974. Um, same director as Christmas Story, oh, Olivia Mark. Hesse, Mark, Margot Kidder. They used to sh sh uh, air it at the, you know, there's been two remakes since, but like, um, uh, yeah, the original uh, with uh, Margot Kidder and Olivia Hesse. 
as fantastic. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. Did you and watch the remake of A Christmas Story? Oh, the new one? Like, well, it's not a remake, but like the yeah, remodeling yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I actually thought it was well. I thought it was well done. I mean, it it, it was very watchable. Um, it was. <laughs> I don't think enjoyable. Taylor agrees. <laughs> it, it, was, it wasn't <laughs> great, but you know, yeah, but it, it, for what it you know, for yeah, for what it was, it was okay for me. It was yeah. cute. It was cute. Yeah, it's just uh, interesting, you know, all these, you know, the Karate Kid and all these things that they're able to bring back with original cast members. Yeah, there's a lot of that happening these days. Jake, what was it that led you to writing, producing, and directing? Um, I When I was talking about doing it when I was a kid, you know, I was, I was directing my, I had written a version of Peter Pan in the fifth grade and was directing it for my class when it wasn't like even part of an assignment. So I don't know. I mean, I, it's just something I was doing since I was a kid. I was writing and, you know, this is always kind of was meant to be. And it just makes sense that I ended up doing, you know, that I'm doing Christmas in the space or whatever, because I, I, you know, this is some of the stuff that I love. So, but we're going to do lots of stuff. There's lots of, lots of, <laughs> lots well, of. Good. I will ask you about that. Well, Taylor and Kyle, the last time we sat down, you had just, pick back up the process to have a baby through surrogacy and Taylor you you described the, the surrogate of your dreams is what you said on my show what was you know the whole process from that moment on until Rafa's birth what was we got so lucky I mean our surrogate really was she's a dream she's just the best woman and former doula and made us feel so comfortable and secure. Uh, we learned a lot. I learned a lot about pregnancy. Um, you know, it's an interesting process as somebody else gives of their literal self to help you have a child. And, but it was just magical. I know not everybody, gay couples included, um, have an easy time in IVF, but we, we really did. And that day at the hospital is just like truly Christmas morning on Halloween though. Um, it was, <laughs> It was so fun. And like the staff at UT down in Tennessee where they were amazing to us and celebrated us as a gay couple. And gosh, when they put that little baby in your arms, your life changes in a way that is hard to articulate. Um, the way I view the world and pretty much everything is just completely shifted through her. And I know it's cliche and everybody says it's going to happen, but it happens. <laughs> like It's crazy. Yeah. My heart, like, I used to be a little bit jaded and a little darker. I kind of miss that version of myself, but it's like when she enters the world, all of any dark corners or anything you felt about how you were raised Mormon or anything you could be kind of displeased with. It just is gone. All of it is gone. It's really weird. And Kyle. I mean, he said it, but I mean, I'm just completely <laughs> obsessed with her. You know, I feel like, like when he said, yeah, because we have what what we have like almost thirty nieces and nephews, Taylor. I mean, like we've oh been God. around lots of children, yeah. lots, and they're all over the place as far as ages go. Um, but still, once we had her, I, I remember like speaking to my brother in laws and sister in laws and my sisters, and just being like, "Why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you let us know how great this was?" It is kind of hard to understand it until you kind of go through it, but it's been totally life-changing. It's a weird shift. Like, especially as a gay man, we, we had the years to, you know, use our finances to travel and go to the most fabulous beaches we could all over the world and have a martini. And that's a really, really cool life. And parenthood is not for everybody. There's a freedom obviously that comes without a child. Um, but yeah, it's just of all the highs, I feel like we've been able to experience in this life and have had the privilege to do so. This is this ultimate, like, never-ending high every day. She's just this little bundle of fat love. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> How has the whole process made you better businessmen with Elevate, having seen it now firsthand for yourselves? I think we know what we're working towards. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of like this weird abstract idea. Um, I don't know that we're any better at what we did before. We're still great at it. But, um, but there is like a, a, a another emotional layer there that I that I can really express now that I probably wasn't able to before. You know, I feel like I was I was reaching a burnout. If I'm being completely honest, I think Kyle 
I sat down next to him a year and a half ago, maybe. And I was like, I don't know if I can keep going at this rate because you do lose a lot of sleep and you, you get so invested in your clients and their cycles mm -hmm. that I just thought it wasn't emotionally sustainable anymore. Um, and having her has completely erased that. And I feel much more excited about sitting at the desk every day and helping other people get to what I know is, mm -hmm. is the ultimate joy. Yeah. I mean, basically being able to put that in their laps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. And how is business? Busy. Booming. Yeah. I think. This time great. of the year, too. It's, it, it's exciting, though, because there is a new generation of gay people that see this as a real possibility. More insurance policies are helping cover IVF fees. So my clients that are gay, it's, we probably serve, I would say, 60-40 um, gay, hetero, um, single IP, intended parents, couples, but m the gay couples that are coming to me are getting younger and younger. Like mm -hmm. it's bizarre. I have a few like 25 year olds who wow. are getting married and or not, and are putting their funds towards this and have been saving for it. And I was like, gosh, you're, you're ahead, man, for people that want to wow. do that. And I, and I don't believe there's a right time or age at all. Um, had I been in a different situation financially, I probably, now that I know how great it is, maybe I would have started done it a little sooner, but everyone has their, their own time. Insurance, you, you just mentioning that, how recent is that, that insurance has started? Yeah, going on for a little bit. Now there's a new program called Carrot. There's Progeny. Um, a lot of people that work through Facebook get full coverage. Um, if you're a same-sex wow. couple, yeah, single and parent, it's amazing. They're saving a lot of money. Even Kyle and I, who run and own an agency, it's still very expensive for us to do it. And we're trying to get going again on our second journey. And I think we found a surrogate. But yeah, um, insurance policies are a great blessing. Wow, that's incredible. Well, to be clear, though, it's not actually insurance. They're like benefit plans. Benefit you know plans. I mean? It's like... Yeah, so, yeah, like FSAs or something that assist at least. Yes. Wow. And, and I love hearing, yes. I mean, even on Instagram, I, I would say I see photographs of just young, what I believe to be younger couples with children. And it, it is amazing. And I think this movie, Jake, ha hiring these two men and these two men going out and doing publicity and talking about their daughter and their agency is, you know, just opening this up to other people who may not know. Right. That it's an option to other gay couples by seeing you guys, you know, seeing. I mean, the publicity for this movie was fantastic. Lifetime killed it. And there was just a couple yeah. of, it is part of our story. Part of me thinks that that's why a lot of these shows wanted Kyle and I on, because there are other more notable actors that are, you know, doing a gay film. I feel like they, they like the, the presenting this married couple family with a kid you know, for, for their demographics to be like, no, look, these guys are normal. It's very palatable. For people. Yeah, yeah. Very, very palatable. <laughs> um, but, and I, of course had to slip elevate in there here and there. Part of the story. You should, you, you get the opportunity. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I, yeah, absolutely. Jake, tell me about your production company. What, what did you set out to do when you created it? This is why we don't have a, have a, um, a blooper reel, Taylor, though, of the behind the scenes, because then be like, palatable. Oh my God, this is not PG. <laughs> <laughs> Our oh, so <laughs> What's the uh, like? Yeah. It's just a Taylor, nice. you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that at least once a day. Like, once not really a day. <laughs> listen, I pushed the envelope as much as I could, but ultimately. <laughs> They know what they're doing, and I'll let Jake talk about his production company. But let me tell you, <laughs> sorry, I, I want to see the blue for real. <laughs> Actors are desperate to work with Ninth House, man. They make it so fun for us. It's like the stakes yeah. are high. Of course, you want to do a good job. The stories are good, but they make it enjoyable. Not everybody yeah. does that. Yeah, Autumn and I have been together for um, six years now. Uh, we started this company, and she's um, you know a young uh, working mom herself. You know, she's she's just. Uh, She's my age, pretty much. But um, uh, how did you, know, you two got, come together? We were introduced by an executive producer who is a friend, a mutual friend of both of ours, actually, who um, is the person who walked Dashing in December into Paramount. So, um, you know, Stephanie Slack, dear friend of mine, uh, did a bunch of movies with her um, prior to meeting Autumn. Um, and uh, she's very talented. 
um, producer. And uh, she introduced Autumn and I because I was looking for someone to to handle a lot of physical production on stuff that I was doing. I was doing a lot of writing and directing and I was just kind of like really stretched very thin. Uh, Autumn was looking into, you know, getting stuff made and, and you know, creating a catalog and so on and so forth. And uh, we did a couple movies together and then decided we wanted to partner and create a company. And so that's kind of how Ninth House transpired. And I mean, I think we've done, I don't know, 40, 30, 40 movies in the last six years i don't know we've done a lot wow. um quite a few movies but uh you know, all written by you two? Oh god no no i mean at this point we were doing we were doing f like four a year initially and i was writing and directing all of them and and you know just the demands the you know people calling us to for projects and so on and so forth you just continue to grow and it just i you know it's it's i've had to in fact i've directed less this year than i have in the last five years because i've had to you know focus on a lot of the creative producing um focus on some development of some bigger projects we're trying to get you know out there and in the works um so yeah it's it's been um an exhausting year of growing pains but also a really fun year in a lot of ways because I was able to be a little bit more choosy about the projects that I'm a, am, am directing now. Um, so, you know, hence, you know, Treasure, um, you know, being one of the, the fewer ones that I did. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an exciting time for us right now. And we're currently talking to Taylor and Kaldeen about our next project which we won't talk much about. We'll keep it quiet. Oh, yes. That's incredible, Jay. Congratulations. It is, uh, wow. They're amazing. That's thanks that really to Taylor. Is. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, we'll, we got a lot. Jake's of the busiest guy in Hollywood. And that's what you're I really mean, it, it, it sure sounds it. Um, yeah. Do you have a preference writing, directing, producing? I mean, writing's always been my first love. Um, but, you know, directing is, almost feels like my calling you know as I've as I've gotten older I feel like you know I'll read scripts sometimes that I'm just like wow like I want to go direct that like I this is something you know I think the writing will always be there I was able to do a lot of writing this year in fact I did a lot of I've done a lot of queer writing I have um uh you know four or five scripts now unproduced you know queer projects that I'm um, trying to get out there you know dramedy and a, and a horror uh, script and two thrillers that are that are all centered, you know, very queer centric. Um, so um, as we try to get those out there, you know, great. But like I I write when I can and I direct when when I can and and I do a lot of work with our company because we've obviously got a lot of other irons in the fire that um, you know need tending to as well. So. Well, maybe, you know, it, it's going to be like the old studio system and, you know, put Taylor and Kyle under contract. And <laughs> seriously, if we I mean, like at that point, like I can't even tell you how many because I have so many talented actor friends. It's just like at this point and especially now with the way the business is growing, it's almost like you need to have as an actor kind of a niche like uh, catalog of like behind you or like a niche market of your own, something that makes you very desirable. So it's like, you know, Taylor's saying like, I want to do queer, queer roles right now. That's genius because that's, he's, this is a way he's able to market himself, you know, and, and um, you know, because the market is massive right now. And so there's more opportunities for actors, but also it's very oversaturated. So it almost like in some ways it creates less opportunities. So you really have to like find your, your way you know, into the fold and, and, you know, the marketing yourself in a way that's smart is, is the best way to do that. So I honestly get act, asked by my actor friends all the time, would you manage me? And I was like, I would manage the hell out of so many of my talented friends if I had the time to like do it, to give them the attention that they deserve. Unfortunately, I just don't have that kind of time. I wish, I really, really wish that I that I could because I think you I didn't know the there. Respect for Marriage Act was signed last night because you were busy writing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how would you describe um, Kyle and Taylor? How would you describe him as a director? Um, Jake, he is. <laughs> What's refreshing about him is he is open to the collaborative process, which some directors just are not, and it is what it is. Um, but like when he's not getting what he wants from where he's sitting in the chair, he will let you know. 
Um, and he's, he's polite about it and he's great, but he will come up and be like, let's try. I know what you just did. We have that. Let's try this. You know, like he just has a way of going about the whole thing that makes you feel confident and free. Mm -hmm. And he's, while he's still getting the end product that he wants. And I think that's a tricky balance because actors are notoriously so awful. Self-absorbed. That's what I was going to say though. It's like, as a director, you're, there's so many things on your plate, right? It's like you're, you're looking at the shot. You're looking at the lighting. You're looking at uh, a continuity, at, at hair, at wardrobe, at the performances. I mean, there's so many things that you are kind of trying to juggle. But as an actor, you're convinced that their response and their demeanor is totally about your performance. I can't tell you how many times I've been on set. Like The director's like, all right, that's good. We're going on. And I was like, well, why was it so awful? Why did you hate me? Why do you hate everything I'm doing? <laughs> and Jake, like has the talent of just keeping the energy up and keeping a light. So it, it makes people, as Taylor said, feel really confident and um, you don't get in your head as much, you know, it's so easy. It's so easy to do that. Who are some of your favorite directors, Jake? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Oh God. That's uh, I got, I wish I had, I, cause I have so many, I wish I had prepared for, uh, Wes Craven, <laughs> rest in peace is, is a, is a favorite director of mine. Um, uh, uh, I love, um, oh my goodness. What is his name? The director of love actually and about time, Richard. Mm. Oh, time. Yeah. Uh, is that it's link good. letter or is that Richard Curtis? I want to say it's Richard Curtis. I could be wrong, and that makes me feel stupid. Um, yeah, um, I love Alfonso Cuarón. Um, I love, um, you know, uh, Kevin Williamson has has not done a lot of directing, but he's a producer, like he and writer that I that I that is a huge, massive inspiration of mine. Um, you know, he did Scream, and I know what you did last summer, and uh, Dawson's Creek, and um, uh, yeah, so he's a huge, huge inspiration of mine. Um, growing up, like I was very obsessed with him. John Hughes, also huge inspiration of mine. Growing up, like I first movies I was introduced to were John Hughes movies. Um, I was watching those movies when I was too young to be watching them, even though yeah. they're like very <laughs> PG-13. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I mean, yeah, there's 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 a ton, and they're kind of all over the place. Quentin Tarantino. I mean, who doesn't want to be Quentin Tarantino? I'm obsessed with all of his movies. Um, and it's just so easy to like his movies. I don't, I mean, it's just like they somehow are so unique and art artsy, but super commercial and like very, very like, you know, palatable. So I don't, I don't, um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to be him. That's great. It is great, <laughs> and great, it great is Richard Curtis. You were right. It is. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was, I was like, God, I didn't want to get that you, wrong. You, you absolutely have it. Have it right. So this is your fourth film in for this year for Lifetime. We did. We did. We shot two last year that came out this year, and we shot two of them this year. And two of them I wrote and directed. Um, so well, what's the other one you wrote and direct besides uh, A Christmas to Treasure? That was Cloudy with a Chance of Christmas. Um, we shot that up in Leavenworth, Washington. It is beautiful Bavarian Christmas town that's famous they get twenty thousand visitors uh up there every every holiday season we shot that last december when the town is like all decked out and dressed up we shot like on the reindeer farm in the gingerbread factory um you know at the wine the winery we shot all over that town the town was very welcoming to us they opened it up they had heard we did a christmas in solving a few years ago um for lifetime as That's well. That's where I was wondering if you were talking about because I've been to Solvang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did that a few years ago. It's called the Very Charming Christmas Town, also Lifetime, um, and they had heard of, we when we approached them, they did know of our film that we did in Solvang, and Solvang, you know, was very happy with the experience we had, and I did kind of the same thing. I went and visited the town before I wrote the script, so I could see all the locations and. Um, you know, see, meet all the people and, and, you know, figure out a way to really bring It's just this year, this the, nowadays you're getting all these, these, they're trying to kind of think outside that we're, we're all trying to think outside the box with Christmas storytelling, because you have so many formulaic stories that have been told over and over again. That's just like, I've done so many that I don't even want to tell those stories anymore. So it's like, if you can find a, a, a way to tell a kind of a fun, fresh take on a, on an old formula, there's just still so many stories to be told. 
And this was a fun one because we were able to like really, you know, explore the history of the town, um, you know, in the story. And uh, it's a really fun script, had a great cast on that film too. Um, and, uh, you know, very proud of it. Um, so, yeah. And what were the other two films you your company did for Lifetime? Uh, Sweet we did uh, Sweet Navi Dodd, um, yeah, which was directed by a dear friend of mine, Brittany Underwood, um, who was who's an actress who uh, starred in a couple of movies of mine as well. Um, one with Taylor, um, uh, Secrets in the Woods, and uh, it was her directorial debut. So it was very exciting to to watch her, um, you know, take off in that way. And she's directed like five movies now since then. So in the last year and a half, so she's really. She's really. Um, I, I did a show with Brittany in the cast of Sweet and Have a Dodd. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Don, so then Don, Don had mentioned it to me last year when they were filming that he wanted. Who, did, who else did you have? Did you have Camila and Mark on? I did. I had all three, okay. and they were really all great together. They were yeah. fabulous. fabulous. So Mark, together. we've done a few handful of movies with. He was in one of my first um, movies, Psycho Stripper, and um, and Camila's actually in a horror movie that I directed and back in June that has not come out yet. Um, and she's fantastic in it. I'm she was a delight. Happy. I didn't realize Mark had done a movie with a, a Kim Zimmer, an actress friend of mine, but I didn't realize it when I interviewed him. Kim um, Zimmer? Yeah. Do you know who that is? I'll have to look her up. No. no she, up. She's from uh, Guiding Light. Talented okay. actress. Um, I got very lucky to see Taylor at 54 Below perform in his cabaret show with Kyle. Um, you just performed in December in Salt Lake. What was it like bringing that home? Oh, it's totally different. It's such a different crowd, such a different vibe. Like New York was so rowdy and there's like a lot of Mormon <laughs> jokes. And I just started the show and like, it was kind of quiet, even though I did like this full open bar party before to like kind of lubricate people into the situation. <laughs> But I got to say, like, I wasn't sure if people were enjoying it because they were just kind of reserved. And throughout, they finally opened up. But, like, yeah, a large portion of it was, like, terrifying. And the theater was huge. And there were so many people there, many of which I knew, some of which I didn't. But, um, yeah, it was kind of terrifying. Well, I was there. You, it was you shared a post from a friend of yours that I wanted to read. Your friend Kate P Peterson said that in third grade, Taylor would force us girls to sit and watch him perform during recess. And yeah. now we pay to see him in concert. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, I was a psycho as a kid. Like, <laughs> that's pretty incredible. Are you are you going to do more? Because I know the one the one at Fifty Four Below was your first time doing it solo, right? Yeah, it was. It felt good. The show came so naturally; it was easy to write. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, the banter, yeah, like it, it, know, you joke. told great stories. You both sang incredible music. Truly, I think I'll do it two two more times. Um, there's a theater in Atlanta that would like to have me out, and then there we're working on a space in Los Angeles actually to do the show. Because the truth is, like, it's it's so much work to put a show like that up. You really have to do it a few times to make it worth your while. And it's the show isn't really. I mean, it's about me, but it's not. That's not the reason I'm I'm doing it. It's not a self masturbatory experience. It's it feels therapeutic. I think for people who are even remotely like me. Um, and I've seen so many of these shows and sometimes people choose the most obscure random music. And I wanted to sing like the hits, the songs like that I would want to hear if I came. So it was, it was, it was fun. I'm glad we did it. Uh, the response has been positive and that's been exciting. It's just, I don't know, kind of empowering. I feel like I'm well, coming in. The two of you need to continue together and, and do it. I mean, the audience love to it. do a show with Kyle, like a right one where like he tells his version of the story I tell mine. Uh, we, <laughs> we end in the middle. Like, no, no, I got no, that. No, no, no. That's not what happened. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might be kind of funny and sing some songs. Yeah, I was just going to say that could be really humorous. Yeah, I think quite, so. quite, quite humorous. You know, holidays are literally around the corner. What are some of your family traditions that you are, well, Kyle and Taylor now going to introduce Rafa to? We'll do PJ. I, I love PJs in a book on Christmas Eve. We always gift each other PJs in a book. And then we change into them and we read by the fire, watch a movie, have a little spiked cider. That's a, oh, she can't Chinese have that. <laughs> yeah, Chinese. We get Chinese on Christmas Eve always. It's the best. That, well, that, that, that's what us Jewish folks do on Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Jake, what do you do down in Texas? What are your family Texas traditions? Um... <laughs> Well, you know, my favorite 
things are probably we usually go to my my sister's um, in Austin. Uh, she lives in like a golf course neighborhood, a beautiful golf course neighborhood in like a mid-century modern house. She's an interior designer and oh, cool. they have like a little ATV, like a little golf cart, whatever that we um, take around. We get in blankets and then just drive around her neighborhood, which is like Christmas the hell out. Yeah. Like, I mean, they had like one of their neighbors used to had the cops getting called because they had like a Clark Griswold dummy hanging from the like the edge of the, the roof. Uh-uh. So like the, it, so people thought it was a real person and were like calling the, yeah. It's it's they go nuts. And so wow. they're taking the golf cart, taking the dogs. We all take the dogs with us under the blankets. And that's one of my favorite traditions. My other is probably I my mom and I cook together, just the two of us, um, on usually on like the 23rd and we're making food, bunch of food at home. And my favorite thing in the world to do is she falls for it every time is pop the freaking champagne bottle right behind her. <laughs> out of her. I have videos over years of like, doing it and like picking candy from a baby. I mean, God love her. It's, yeah. Are, are you a good cook? Uh, I'm a good, I'm, I mean, I'm a good baker. Yeah, I guess I'm like, I, I do a really good pumpkin cake, pumpkin cream cheese cake. Uh, that I only make at Christmas time. Send my address. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Not not a huge. Who who cooks with you two? How's the better cook? He's a great cook. Like he whips stuff out of nowhere. The little crafty little bitch he is. I don't know how he does it. He's just fantastic. I'm like, there's nothing in the fridge, and he's like, here's an Asian Chinese, a chopped chicken salad with a, a all these flourishes and stuff. So he's better. I don't enjoy cooking. I really don't like it, but I try. I cook for Rafa. You do cook a lot. Yeah, you do cook a lot. Yeah. Now that we're home a lot, we have, we have no choice. <laughs> we're just here a lot, so we're cooking. Nice. Thanks. Well, thank you all so much. What's next? Anything <clears throat> else you are working on that you can share without giving anything away? <laughs> um, uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> like Jake said. Um, well, you're working on baby two. Right. Okay. Working on baby two. Okay. We'll keep Jake. We're trying to collaborate with Jake on a pretty cool, exciting project. We'll see how that pans out. And then my last film, Shoulder Dance, was submitted to a bunch of festivals. Um, so that mm. has Rick Cosnet yeah. and Matt Dallas and Maggie Gia and myself. And uh, we'll see how that does. That was a really fun project to do as well. That's a little spicier than the Lifetime films. There's a lot of nudity and a lot of sex all the time. Okay. The whole movie. Get gay themed as well. Very the gayest. Super. Gay. <laughs> There's a really fun scene. I'm actually excited to see where I'm like standing in front of Matt, and I just had swam in the ocean. I come off, come home. I'm trying to turn him on. I drop my speedo off and right in front of him, sit him in the bed, and I get to take the speedo and I just drop it on his face. And it's like it's, it was really fun to do because Matt was just like, "Oh my gosh, like what is happening?" <laughs> it was a blast. Well, congratulations. Congratulations on this film, Christmas to Treasure, this Friday night, December 16th, 8 p.m. Eastern. We have to figure out how to watch it now since YouTube TV, I don't think, has it. So I have to yeah. figure it out. We'll you can, like uh, just for your viewers, like, uh, again, try the, try the Lifetime channel on your Roku um, or the Lifetime app on your computer. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it probably will be available um, either after the day that it airs or maybe the day after it airs you can usually go unlock uh per film and and watch um yeah. i'm new to i'm new to, god bless you i'm new to the roku so I, i'll download the lifetime app and figure figure that out but, yeah i'll go figure that out as well yeah absolutely well happy holidays to all Thank three you, of you and uh enjoy your second christmas with your beautiful daughter Thank and thanks for too. doing this and congrats guys thanks, thanks so much Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks to Kyle, Taylor, and Jake. Don't forget A Christmas to Treasure this Friday night, uh, December 16th at 8 p.m. Join me on Friday, De uh, December 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern when Claiborne Elder stops by to, to share the story of how one act of kindness from a stranger changed his life at 23 years old. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you like today's show, click the like button. And you can download audio versions by searching the locker room on your favorite streaming platform.
platform. Have a great evening and I'll see you on Friday.